coming up next. He's, he was a Green Beret. He was also an NFL player. And now he is a part of the Discovery Channel series, Survive the Wrath. That's right, Nate Boyer will be joining us right here on Sidewalks Entertainment. So don't go anywhere. From the Discovery Channel series, Survive the Wrath, I'd like to welcome Nate Boyer to Sidewalks Entertainment. Hi, Nate. Thank you so much for joining us. Of course, Lori. Thanks for having me. So tell me a little bit about your life before Survive the Wrath, how you became a Green Beret, how you became an NFL player, um, how you got a part in the film Den of Thieves with Gerard Butler. I'd imagine that you have some pretty amazing stories and experiences. Yeah, you know, I mean, I grew up in the Bay Area and, uh, you know, I wanted to be a professional athlete my whole life growing up and I wanted to be a football player, I wanted to be a player in the NFL one day. And uh, ironically, I never played football growing up. So it was a big regret of mine. Um, so after high school, you know, I no scholarship offers in baseball or basketball, I moved down to Southern California, worked on a fishing boat, did all kinds of odd jobs. And then 9-11 happened. And eventually that led me to the military. So I became a Green Beret and uh, spent about 10 years total in the military. And then I, I went to college much later in life. Uh, I was a 29-year-old freshman at the University of Texas. And I walked onto the football team and found a way on the field and eventually found a position uh, where I could play and and had an opportunity at the next level with the Seattle Seahawks. So then I, I got to play in the NFL. And, and when that ended, and I lost, you know, the, the camouflage and I lost the jersey. I was searching for purpose and meaning and, you know, and I had a lot of passions and 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 one of those was was working in film and television and storytelling. So uh, it started out with acting and I got uh, the opportunity to, uh, you know, to to land a few acting gigs and and was fortunate to, to do that. And, you know, as you mentioned, Den of Thieves was one of those films. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, this opportunity, uh, you know, this show, this series, Survive the Raft with Discovery Channel, uh, it really brought together all these experiences that I had had um, and, and being in these different locker rooms with people from all walks of life, you know, that, that don't always necessarily see eye to eye, but are willing to put that stuff aside to go out there and win the game, you know what I mean, or be successful on the battlefield. Um, that kind of stuff is very interesting to me because that's a big part of my life. So that's what, you know, happened on this show. And that's how this opportunity came about to host survive the raft because i'd kind of been in similar situations in some ways uh, to what these people experience out there on the raft itself wow so somewhere along the way um along with everything that you've always wanted to do and your passions and everything now along with sports announcer jay glazer you're also one of the co-founders of the nonprofit merging vets and players yeah. tell me a little bit about merging vets and players yeah, merging vets and players, you know, we call it MVP for short. We bring together combat mm -hmm. vets and former professional athletes, and we help them find purpose and identity when they lose the uniform. Uh, so that that's something that I experienced. You know, when I lost, like I said, those those two uniforms, I didn't really know what I was going to do next. And I felt like I had all this passion, and I felt like, you know, man, I'm 34. I got so much life to live. There's no way I've already peaked, uh, and and I'll never be great again. There's 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 got to be something. And, uh, and so many feel like that, you know, not just vets and athletes, I think people, you know, transitions are tough mm -hmm. and uh, having to move forward. And then not only, you know, remember where you came from and, and sort of um, leverage those skills and those things that you learned to be successful at the next level, but figuring out how to transition those skills and, and feeling like uh, you're not alone, you know, and that you can find a new tribe in a sense, all those things are important. So that's why MVP you know, is important. And, and that's why we, we, you know, created this organization and, and people can go check that out at vetsandplayers.org uh, if they'd like. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, I, I think that experience, um, these people from, you know, whether it's athletes, veterans, wherever these people come from, who have these different perspectives, you know, that's something um, that we sort of brought in and folded into this show as well. Um, while this, you know, Survive the Raft isn't about um, uh, you know, the MVP, uh, it's very similar in a lot of ways, because, you know, when we conduct our, our huddles with MVP, we've got 
a portion of the day where we're we're circled up on these uh, you know on the on the wrestling mat or a good workout and we're vulnerable with one one another and we got to share you know what's going on with us and struggles and all that and just be open and you get to see that uh similarly uh, on uh, survive the raft you know where these people from different walks of life who don't always see to eye, to eye to eye on things and who you know are very set in their ways maybe and 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 think that well my way is the way that works best for me and then they're that's challenged you know and they have to open up their aperture a bit and and understand that you know there's other ways uh, and other people that can bring uh, special uh, unique skills to the table to help the group move forward Absolutely. So when you're not when you're not working on survive the raft, TV acting, or when you're working when you're not working on MVP, what do you like to do in your free time when you're off work? <laughs> I like to challenge myself in different ways, you know. So I got something coming <laughs> up uh, in, in August. I'm running 100 miles in the Leadville, Colorado. It's uh, the Leadville 100. It's a 100 mile race through the Rockies. Um, you're up wow. at altitude, it's very challenging. I've never ran that far before, but I've been training for it. Um, just to see if I can do it. Cause I love to push myself to the limits and, uh, you know, see what's possible. That sounds amazing. So how long have you been training for that for? Oh, just, uh, uh the last two or three months, really. I mean, I've always liked to stay in good shape and, and like to do different mm -hmm. things and kind of, you know, challenge myself physically in different ways. So, uh, but this has been something that I've spent you know, really focused the last two or three months on preparing and training for. So I'm putting a lot of miles in, uh, you know, I was just, I just, uh, this last week, I think I put about 70 or 80 miles in. Uh, so that's something that, you know, I get to get out there on the trails and I, I don't have my phone with me and I kind of disconnect from the world a bit. Uh, and, and I think that's important for all of us to do, you know, to have those moments, you don't have to run, but doing something where we're not constantly on the devices, you know, we've, we've got to just like, got to separate. Yeah, something that we're not on our phones. Yeah, our screens. So as you mentioned earlier, uh, Discovery Channel's Survive the Raft is about a group of people from all walks of life and different cultures. They all come together and they do challenges together and see how well they can work together. So what caught your interest in being a part of the series? It really spoke to me because, you know, I, I know what it's like to be in those locker rooms where you've got people that just think differently and, and they had a different life experience. And because of that, you know, they've got a different set of beliefs. And mm -hmm. I also know what it's like to see those people come together and put that stuff aside uh, to, you know, to win a game or to be successful on the battlefield or whatever that is. Uh, and that's the, recreating that was really cool. And being a part of that again, and, and getting to see it in a different format in a different way where, you know, you can't go home at night uh, and, and, you know, separate yourself from the team. It's like, you're there. It's almost like a deployment in some ways. Of course, we're not going to war here. Um, but when you're on a deployment, you know, I was on a special forces team with 12 people and we are doing everything together. We are, we, we, we can't get away from each other, you know? Um, mm -hmm. and it's like, you, you experience some really challenging and tough things. And then you experience some things that really bring you together and connect you. And you get to learn so much about these people and, you know, it really challenges your perceptions. And I think that's what was so cool about uh, Survive the Rap and so important is that that's exactly what happens. These people, these nine people from all these different walks of life, there's nowhere to run. You know, there's nowhere to hide. They're on this, this raft floating in the Pacific Ocean and they've got challenges they've got to conduct every day and, and they've got to figure out, you know, how are we going to get through this? How are we going to come together um, and keep moving forward as a group. Uh, and, and then they're tempted, you know, they're tempted to, to be individuals at certain times and to, you know, to sort of betray the group. And, and that's tough when you know that there's, there's, there's a life changing amount of money on the line. So like all these things kind of come up and, you know, they've got to make some really hard decisions. And then they know all the while they've got millions of people that are going to be watching them do this. Uh, that kind of pressure is, is, uh, man, it, it brings out some very interesting uh, uh, perspectives. It brings out some very, uh, I guess it, it brings to light, uh, the, the true people that we are, those, those true colors and, you know, and, and, uh, it's fun to watch, but, but I mean, more important than anything to me was watching the growth in a lot of these people and, and how they were willing to, to change, you know, and, and sort of develop as human beings just in, in this short 21 days. So one last question before we wrap, 
how do you think you would have done if you were put in the same place as the rest of the crew where you had to do some of the challenges that challenges that the crew did? Uh, you know, I mean, I'd like to think that I would be just fine out there. I've been through worse. I've been through tougher. I no, no issue. Uh, the reality is I haven't been through something like that, you know, and, and I think being that vulnerable and raw and, and, uh, visible, uh, with who you are to the rest of the world. I don't know what that's like, uh, in that way. So I, I'm not sure I, I would, I would, like I said, I, I would love to think that I would, that would be just fine. And I would, I would survive the raft, you know, but I, mm. I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I don't know. I, I can't, <laughs> uh, I can't say for sure. I wish I could, but that's, what's special about the show. I mean, it, it really is. It challenges your own expectations and perceptions of what you think is going to happen, and uh, you know you can you, you can take that lineup on on episode one and think, oh, that person, that person, that person, they're all going to be just fine. The rest of them, I don't know. And then as the show goes on, you know your eyes are opened more and more, and and the twists and the turns, and you know the 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 way these people are sort of, um, in a sense, you know, naked to us, you know, and, and we and we have to that they have to. Um, make these really hard decisions. You, you know, you, 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 your own perceptions are challenged. And I think that's what's uh, what's really unique about the show. Well, Nate, it was such a pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you so much, everyone. You can watch more of Nate Boyer in Survive the Raft on the Discovery Channel. You take care, Nate. Nate, thank you. I really appreciate it. For more full-length celebrity interviews. Visit us at SidewalksTV.com, our YouTube channel, and don't forget to follow us on social media.